Hey everyone! So today I am with Kiwi and uh, this is actually take two because I had no audio in the first one. Um, yeah, hopefully Kiwi will just be napping and if you guys hear him snoring, um, I hope you guys can be patient. <laughs> He's quite the diva. Oh, so cute. Okay, buddy. He's like, why did you wake me up from my slumber? All right, so today's video is going to be nice and sweet where we're just gonna go over some tips and tricks on how to get a little bit more detail into your marvelous designer stuff. Um, I noticed that when I first started working in this program, I would have a piece and I'm like, cool. I mean, that looks like clothing, right? But then I'm like, mm, I just feel like it looks a little flat, you know? Like, I feel like I could get a little bit more detail, but I didn't know how. So just by through trial and error, I was able to do some stuff that I'm going to go over today. And hopefully that will help you guys get a little bit more oomph in your pieces. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, I'm going to address the pants first. So I'm going to freeze everything and just hide them for now so that we could just fully look at these pants so these are just your average pants and a lot of the um issues that i had was around the crotch area and how to get those memory folds that we so love uh so the first thing i would do is i'm going to extend this guy uh in the center just so that there's a little bit more excess for us to play around with and as you can see already, we are starting to see the folds kind of come out to play. But they do still look weird because obviously there's this little wrinkle that happens. It's not perfect, right? So how do we get this guy to work? So I'm going to add a few points. doesn't really matter the length, but just across the flat side of the front here. And within that uh, segment line, I'm going to turn on elastic. And I'm going to make the strength 100 so that we could just see what's going on with elastic. And now you can see that it's starting to gather it in a way that looks more like memory folds. So if we step this guy down because it is at particle distance 20, we will see more and more that the folds are starting to look a little familiar to what we see in that area. Okay. And obviously I just haphazardly place them, but you can, you know, take your time and control the amount and where you want it. And you could even lower this guy if you feel like there's too much excess up here. But yeah, that, that's something for you guys to play around with. Just know the larger the segment line, um, the more wrinkles that you will have. But just be careful because you don't want it to look a little, I think it looks a little silly right now. So we do want to be a little more tasteful. Uh, a little goes a long way and using your references is always key to getting the ideal look instead of just guessing. And I wouldn't leave it like this just because it does look a little strange, but it kind of gives you the kind of, I guess, uh, right steps in the right direction, if you will. So the next thing that I get asked about is how to get those memory folds in the back where the knees are. So this one, I do approach it a little differently. I actually use my pin tool and I try to pin one here and one here uh, to start. And I'm just going to focus on this guy first where I'm just going to grab him and just start lifting him up in space. And I like grabbing just one, um, I like pinning just one uh, vert, I guess. I'm not sure if they really call it verts in MD, but uh, verts for the sake of this tutorial. And I like to just push it up. And as you can see, I'm starting to get some information here, right? Unless I like that fold, I'm going to get another pin and grab just one vert. And the reason why I do that is because when the chunk is too big, it's a little bit harder to hide and manipulate uh, that guy. As opposed to just one dot where I can kind of move him around slowly and surely um, and kind of get away with it being like tucked underneath or it's just a little bit easier to hide. So what I mean 
if we were to do an example is say I got a big chunk like that it's just e harder to manipulate this guy without this whole section kind of being frozen if you will so uh, delete that but to each their own I feel like this is um, enough for me to just get the look that I desire And this one, it, it will take a little bit more time, but uh, I feel like I still was able to get some nice results using this method. It just will be you constantly looking at your references and seeing how these folds will look. And what have you. Yes, that is how I would get that. And if I just, whoops, nope this show pins if I turn those off already we can start seeing that these wrinkles are starting to form from a rather straight wrinkleless path okay I'm gonna bring these back in show pins now let's bring up our t-shirt shift Q and let's freeze our pants since we're no longer going to work on that area and with the shirt, <laughs> it's going to be a little strange on him, but I think it's good for the exercise. Uh, this is so um, kind of like sculpting using internal lines. So sorry about that. Um, I'm going to just make a fabric that's about the length of one half. Actually, I'll just do something like this. And I'm just going to control D. And then I'm going to use my segment sewing tool and key and sew these guys onto the shirt. So it's going to have a little bit of a strange shirt, but oh well. So those two guys together and I'm just going to sew these guys together so they look like one piece. And if you're ever in a situation where your ruffles are not looking ruffly, or better yet, they need to be more specific wrinkles, I will show you a few methods of how I manipulate things. So the first thing is, if ever you have ruffles like this and you're like, ooh, I kind of want more information, all you have to do is uh, expand the length. Just make sure everything else is frozen. Oh, and let me just grab these guys, control H them so that they kind of get out of the shirt a little faster. Oh, oh, it's because of my jacket. Okay, so let me shift Q and let me deactivate my jacket. I think it's simming very strangely because of the jacket on top. So deactivate and shift Q. Now it should lay better. Perfect. Sorry about that, guys. And now everything should be working. And we're just going to keep on expanding this guy. And I'm just going to strengthen him so that he works himself out a lot faster. And we could always just help him out in these areas here and here. Okay, after we get them simmed out, we can unstrengthen so that we can see more details and see what's going on and now we have way more information and if you need more wrinkles then you just make it larger and larger but another thing that i want to point out is i actually like using internal lines to kind of sculpt out specific um, folds so sometimes uh, in pants or in uh, sleeves there are these specific folds that I kind of want to achieve. So let's just focus on this area for the time being. So I just sculpt like or sketch out where I want the wrinkles to be. And depending on the wrinkle, I will change the fold angle to either something less than the value of 180 or more than the value of 180. And if you do a value that's more than 180, it will indent the the fabric and if you do less than 180 it will poof out the fabric 
so for this example let's do 270 usually that's the measurement to indent as you can see it's starting to indent it so uh, let me turn off my internal line so that we could see that and you can see that it's very specific to the well i don't know what i was trying to say but it's it, it helps kind of fake that fold so if ever you feel like there's not enough wrinkling in certain areas, you can kind of use this. But something to note is that since these are internal lines, they're going to be rather crispy. Uh, they're not going to be these soft rolls. So these are usually used in situations where I am trying to extend the pleat and kind of have that um, be a very sharp, almost like ironed uh, indentation. I also use it around uh, bows, the middle part of the bow, I like to use the in, uh, internal lines to kind of give it more uh, wrinkling opportunities. So yeah, that's a neat little trick that I learned along the way. The last thing I will do is show you guys, uh, this is another common question that I have is how do I get the uh, seams, the seam detail that I usually see on corsets or uh, utilitarian jackets, pretty much any jacket that you see, like especially on denim, wherever you see that seam, you see kind of like that bubbling that happens around um, because of the excess, the offset um, fabric. So if you guys don't know what I mean, I will walk you through it right now. He looks so funny with his little, his little cute um, ruffle shirt. But I'm just going to freeze that. And you know what? Let me just freeze me, me, <laughs> me sleeves. Um, I'm going to freeze the sleeves as well so that we can focus on the next part of getting those seams a little bit more oomphy. So let's cut and sew our seam area. So whatever you want to designate it. I highly recommend that we start at two centimeters at least and this is just so that um, this method can work. Uh, and then I'm going to create another internal line. Uh, I'm going to do one and I'm also going to offset internal line here to one. Okay. Once I have my offsets, I'm going to grab my internal lines, cut and sew. And now we have three pieces. So I'm going to actually at this time grab everything but the middle chunk here around the collar. So you see that I left the middle chunk here. I'm just going to leave those as is. And oh, I'm just going to sew these guys onto each other before anything else. Uh, there we go. Okay. Once I sew them on, I'm going to grab all my patterns but the middle strip and freeze them. It's critical that um, you freeze them just so that we can manipulate this middle guy in piece without it uh, dragging the entire pattern along for the ride. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to offset it now. So I'm just going to scale it upwards. Uh, it really doesn't matter. You can even just grab it and uh, offset it vertically, uh, sorry, horizontally. It doesn't matter. Uh, as long as it's substantially a different size from the original pattern. And as you saw, you don't see a difference, right? Well, that's due to the fact that this is particle distance 20 and pretty much it just doesn't have enough topology to represent that amount of detail in that small amount of space. So don't be discouraged. Just step down your uh, fabric little by little. And with in this case, because it's such a small piece of fabric, we do have to step it down all the way to like three for it to start showing up. But as you see, in, even at five, you're starting to see that bubbling that's happening. 
And one last time, just for good measure, we're going to step this guy down to three so that we can see it in full effect. And as I see that there's not that much wrinkling here in the front, so I'm just going to pull this front pattern forward. And I'm just being very ambitious so that we could just start seeing all the bubbling that's happening. And same with this guy, I'm just going to make him a little bit taller so that we can see the nice bubbling that can happen. And this is very nice to do at the very end. Guys, with all these like wrinkle details that I'm showing you, do not do this at the very beginning of your project where you're just trying to get the patterns to lay on the body. This is stuff that you would do at the very end. This is stuff that you would do at the very end, right before you're exporting. And so, especially things like this, because it needs to be particle distance three for it to really see um, the details. And this is just a great little thing for you to do uh, around the seams of your jackets, um, like anywhere on the edges. I see it uh, on the collars, on, you know, um, polo collars, I see it. You can apply this anywhere. And um, the last thing I want to show you is actually pretty simple, is how to get more details on your sleeves. So as you see here, this jacket is laying quite flat on him, right? So I'm going to grab uh, the arm patterns and I'm going to unfreeze them and unstrengthen them. Let's sim them and see what details we get. So I know a lot of us get to this position and we're kind of like, it doesn't look bad, but I feel like I'm just not really getting that crunchiness, right? So a way that you can do this is make sure that your cuffs are uh, sewn separately as a different pattern. So you can cut and sew your cuff at this point and make sure that you freeze them on the spot that you want them to lay at. So if you want them oversized, make sure the cuff is laying here. It really doesn't matter where. But once you do that, you're just going to extend your arm sleeve pattern. And what that will do is it will start scrunching up your arm sleeve pattern. And this is a very easy way of trying to gather all your wrinkles onto that elbow area. So same with this side, I'm just going to pull it upwards so that it starts scrunching in that area. And I was a little ambitious, so you'll see a little bit more detail than you should, but this is just so that we can clearly see what I'm doing. I'm just going to step it down particle distance so that we can see it in full effect. And let's do five and sim. And that is how you can get a pretty good amount of detail for very fast, very quickly. Um, <laughs> it's a little strange looking outfit, but still, it works. He's a, he's a goin'a. But yeah, I hope these tips and tricks um, can help you out in your next project. Uh, don't be discouraged, keep on going. Um, you're doing great, and I hope that you are able to get a little bit more detail in your marvelous designer pieces. All right, guys. Bye.